Okay, so let's talk a little bit more now about the true table and the uh, equations which are equivalent to the true table but using Boole's algebra. And that equations are the sum of min terms or the product of max terms. The three concepts go together and are perfectly well equivalent. So if we pay attention now to the previous example of the basic gates, you see that the short and the not short had these two tables and you know that the simplest equation was this one a and b naught or a naught b to define the short gate and this can also be explained like this a short b that way right this is the symbol for the short gate okay a cycle with a cross something like this so you know, there are many more ways to express the logic gate or the true table using equations. I mean, this one is simpler, one of the many, right? For example, uh, if this is the gate and this is the table that you have in mind, you know, let's see why we have this representation, where this representation, where this equation came from, all right? Let's do that thing and let's get, the, let's see if we can get the idea. Well, and this comes from this uh, idea that if you've got a function, for example, C of the variables A and B ordered like this, you know, you have four possible combinations. You can name them accordingly to the decimal equivalent to the binary code. For example, this is a 3 in binary. All right? And this is a 0 in binary. So you have 0, 1, 2, 3 as the binary numbers accompanying every one of the combinations. And you can have them ordered or disordered. doesn't matter. The point is that if you have, for example, a seven, seven is just one, 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 you know? So this is the seven in radix 10, and this is one, one, one in radix two, and both numbers are perfectly well the same. So in this way, every one of the combinations in the two table has a decimal representation as a number. So you can imagine now that you can write the function of the two table using the terms which are one and you collect them all in a sum for in this way you have what is called a sum of mean terms an expression consisting of all the terms that are one in the two table and ordered ordered together right like this so you have the mean term 1 or the mean term 2. This is the mean term term 1 because it's the 1 in decimal, right? And this is the mean term 2 because it's a, one has these values, 1, 0 in binary. So this is the equation. And this, so it's the same as the mean term 0, 1 or, you know, this is a or not a plus, but a or, okay? So this is the mean term, 0, 1, or the mean term, 1, 0. That's the function, all right? And now, if instead of this concept of mean term, which is a term in the true table that is 1, right? So if you take this concept of a mean term, now you can enlarge these, you can represent like this using these values as A and B. So a mean term is a product of all the terms, you know, ordered as inputs, you know, like this, but 
uh, written in this way. When the variable is a zero, you have to not it. So when the variable is a zero, you have to not it. So this is why the C is a function of A and B with this OR. Okay, this OR of these two terms. Okay. So in this way, you have the function and you have a second because you know that if you have a you have an equation, it is immediately a second. So this equation may be very well written as well as a logic diagram. So this is the input A and so here you are the input B and B naught, so like this, A, A naught, B, B naught, and so you've got A naught, B, and then you've got A, B naught, and now you have an AND, you see, this is an AND. So this was an OR, so this is an AND. Now you, you can represent here a couple of AND and a final OR. So you know this is the function C that is exactly the one that is represented as a shore. So you see this equation, the one that we get the other day here as the definition of a shore is nothing but a logic circuit which is the composition of two minimums. So here you can now name very well A naught B. So it's A naught and B. So this is nothing but the mean term 0, 1. All right? So this is the mean term 1. And so this wire here is nothing but you see A, B naught and B naught. So this is the mean term. 1, 0, so it's the mean term 2. So exactly the C is just the OR of the two mean terms. That's the definition of the chore gate. Considering the typical equation, you see, that we have in mind, which is nothing but the sum, you know, the OR of two terms, the ones which are generating a 1, right? in the two table. And so in the same way you can do something equivalent considering the zeros. If you take the zeros, what are you taking here from the table is the term 0 and the term 3, right? So the same function C of the variables A and B is nothing but now a product. You can consider the product of the max term 0 and, you see, a product is because it's the and, so it's a product of the max term 0 and the max term 3, which is nothing that the max term 0, 0, now in binary, and the max term 1, 1. And this is nothing but the representation of the max terms using the inputs and the max terms are represented in the in the dual way you know you know in this way it's going to be a uh, or of two sums so the max term is a sum of all the input variables ordered correctly and represented like this. If the variable is zero, you have to write the variable as it is as a literal. So zero, zero means A or B. And if the variable is one, but now because it's a max term, is the variable not that way. So this equation is perfectly well the same as the one that we had before, the one belonging to a shore. And this equation, you know, represents in the same way as before the shore. And so you can very well represent that as before using a circuit. 
So this is the input B, B naught, and this is the A naught. This is a buffer for the A, so here you are A and B. Okay, A and B are the inputs of the circuit. So here you are a OR and a final AND. That's just the dual circuit that you've got before. Using min terms now, if you are using max terms, is like this. So now you take from this first level of gates, you see here you are in some way generating a first level of gates, okay? So from this first level of gates, you can generate A and B, and now you can OR them and you can take A naught and B naught and in the same way you can OR them so here you have something like A or B A naught or B naught and so now you can AND them using another level of gates this time is the final AND all right the final AND this one here, right? So this is yet again another time the output C. So both circuits are very well equivalent and those are the canonical circuits of a shore gate, all right? And finally, if you like, you can try the circuits. That is something that you could like to do very often. If you have invented the circuit that corresponds to an equation, there is always this possibility of checking the circuit. Let's see if it works or not. Using stimulus, for example, let's apply 1 and 0 here. What happens when I apply 1 and 0 in both circuits? So now let's do this. You see 0 is copied here, so here you are a 0 in this literal wire, and then you have a, a 0, but the 0 is not, so you have a 1, you see here, you have a 0 and a 1, and then because you have a B connected to 1, you have a 1 here, but B naught, you know this last wire, is a 0. That's what you've got here. And here the same, you see? You have A, the value A is a 0, the value A naught is a 1, the B is a 1, and the B naught is a 0. This is exactly the same as before, as, uh, the same in both both literals are the same. But now look at this. You here are taking this value, 0, okay, and 1. And here you are taking this value, 1, and now 0. And now you have a OR, so if you are ORing 0 or 1, this is a 1, right? And if you are ORing 1 and 0, is yet another time 1. And if finally, if you have 1 and 1, you have a 1, right? So this is what you have to have, applying 1, 0, which is this number 2 combination from the two tables. So this is the right value that you have in this circuit. And now let's check the other one. It has to be the same thing. Let's check it, right? Here you are a 1 as input, and here you are another 1. So now the output of this AND is a 1, and here you are a 0, right? And here you are another 0, so both 0 and 0 generates a 0. So finally, 1 or 0 is 1. So you see, you can take a different color to do that last checking in your second. Let's see if not for all the possible values, because that is going to be something that is going to be solved by a computer, but, you know, in order to do that by hand, you can check some values on the table to see if, more or less, or the circuit that you are inventing works or not, right? So that's the idea here. So, basically, as you see in the presentation, we are talking here about the two tables, right? We have symbols, but the symbols sometimes looks like this, and sometimes, you see, it's a full circuit that is considered the symbol, if you like. 
this thicket, you know, internally composed of several oars and several lands and etc., this thicket is the same shore that we had represented in this way, in a compact way, this special symbol. And yet again another time, you can encycle this in a dotted line and this thicket for you is nothing but the same shore. You see the shore that has this true table and as a symbol or thickets has different possibilities, you see. And if we talk now about equations, that is that way. If we talk about equations here, you can see very well what is the sum of mean terms in one hand, which is this circuit here, right on the left of the whiteboard, and on the right side of the whiteboard you have a perfectly equivalent circuit which is generated considering the product, you see, of max terms. Being the max terms, by definition, the opposite of a mean term. You see, the max term is a term in the true table that is zero. So, here you are considering the max term zero and the max term three. All right. So, perhaps to finalize this, we can have yet another equation for both, the sum of mean terms and the product of max terms. And this equation is a kind of a compact definition, because we are, can use decimal symbols here, decimal numbers, and capital letters and small letters for the mean terms and capital letters for the max terms, we can even go and represent the product of max terms like this, you see? I can use the red pen now to represent the C as a function of A and B, but now is a product, you see, of the mean terms, of the max terms, you see, 0, column 3. That's another way. A product, you see, the product symbol, pi, of the max terms 0, 3. This compact representation is exactly like this one. Or, in this case, you see, the C as a function of A and B can be represented as usual with this special symbol for the chore, or you can consider this compact version using the sum of mean terms. So this is something like this, a sum of the mean terms that are represented using a small m and the number in decimal, the 1 and the 2, or the 2 and the 1, doesn't matter the order, right? So that's the final equation. So if you are expressing a true table, all right, like this, in the end, you are at the same time expressing one of these equations or both of them, because it's one occasion, equation or the other, that's the way, right? Is everything clear here?